Welcome to Wasm Cloud Wednesday for February the 23rd, 2022. As usual, we want to start with a demo. We've got three quick demos today. Um, let me start with one uh, that was submitted to us uh, via um, uh, our Slack channel. Uh, and uh, this is neat. I'm going to try to get Alan to come out and give a longer presentation on this. Uh, but what Alan has created here is uh, a multiplayer browser game built with Bevy and uh, Wasm Cloud as the back end. Uh, and he's open sourced all of this and um, I kind of put it out here. And it looks like some pretty interesting stuff that he's got between his game logic and, um, uh, and all the actors that he was able to build and put in here. So I'm pretty excited to tear into this, uh, but we'll put a link um, uh, to this in our Slack channel for folks that uh, want to play. And, um, and then I want to hand off the mic for our next demo uh, to Matt. Uh, Matt, you want to take a second and maybe introduce yourself and then you can um, introduce the topic that you'd like to bring up today? Sure. Um, so, hi, my name's uh, Matt Gilbride. I will, um, I've been lurking for a while, making um, pedestrian contributions with Brooks to Wash um, in between child rearing and, and my day job. Um, and I started about a year ago uh, wanting to poke around with Rust, and I created a little game. Um, if anyone's heard of code names, it's a board game um, popular here in the US uh, with, with Rust as the REST service backing the game. Um, it initially at one point was implemented with Wasm Cloud and the Redis provider. Um, but as people know, uh, probably aware, running Redis on AWS is quite expensive for the managed service. And even like running it in an EC2 instance is more expensive than I had an appetite to um, pay on my personal AWS bill. So I kind of pulled out all the component parts and now the backing data store is DynamoDB, um, which kind of inspired me to want a DynamoDB provider of sorts. Um, so I've begun uh, work on a provider called KV DynamoDB uh, yesterday. Um, and I've just gotten to the point where uh, I have some methods to set and get keys in DynamoDB. And it's, it's brought up some interesting, interesting conversations about uh, what DynamoDB is. Um, I think in some cases it could be a key value provider. Uh, some could argue that there are use cases where it's a blob store and like lots of things in between. Um, but I'll post, I can share Liam or I can just post the links in the channel. Here is the, the game that is currently not uh, running on Wasm Cloud under the hood, but hopefully will be soon. And here's the repo. Um, and then, yeah, did you want to just pull up your screen and just, uh, and just share real quick? Um, you want to pull sure. this up and just kind of click through? Um, now I'm, now I'm, ha I'm able to share. So here we go. Um, so code names is a pretty rudimentary kind of word game for those of you that are familiar where you essentially have a team two teams, a red team and a blue team, are attempting to guess which of these cards are red or blue based on a clue, which is any other word that someone called the spy master will give them. Um, so if I join a team, for instance, as a spy master, I now can see the answers, right? And I would, for instance, try to get my teammates to connect, um, putting myself on the bot spot here, say, uh pants and police which are both blue words by throwing out some other word and hoping that they associate those two words together and don't guess any of the red words and for sure don't guess what is called the death card which immediately ends the game um so you can imagine there's like some kind of basic rest api so let's say i want to give a clue of you know clothes um interactions going on here i'll go back and log in as another user so if I'm now not spy master, the blue team member may want to guess, say, I want to guess the word shot and then see that like, okay, oh, wow, right, that was a blue word. Um, so that's the game. And behind the scenes here, um, I actually implemented the service layer, you know, in attempts to learn Rust in kind of three different pieces. So one piece is called domain that is just intended to be pure Rust business logic. Um, another piece is called Actix, which is just a Rust Actix web implementation of the game, which is what's running now. And then a now defunct piece called Wasm, 
which was intended to be the uh, equivalent WASM cloud, uh, WASM cloud, WASM cloud, sorry if I mispronounced, um, implementation of the, the game logic. Um, so it took a bit of effort. There've been a few iterations where I'm kind of pulling out component parts so there are less functional dependencies between uh, architecture. Uh, between pieces of architecture like front end, back end, you know, what's running on EC2 versus a static site deployed to cloud front on AWS, things like that. And I'm now to the point where the only thing that runs on EC2 is that Actix web server. Um, and it could be just a Wasm Cloud host um, with an actor and a capability provider giving me um, giving me an interface to DynamoDB. Uh, so the last thing here quickly is here's my just some some whip in progress uh, fork of the capability providers project where I've begun to implement a you know DynamoDB key value client that is just interacting with a DynamoDB table as if it's a key value store. So it's just using a single simple partition key um, string column or attribute and then a, a string value attribute um, is the expectation. And this is hot off the presses as of yesterday. Uh, and I've just started to ask some questions in the channel about uh, how to test this now that there's some rudimentary functionality in existence. Um, hoping that uh, I can push the envelope here for a few more weeks and, and get it out there. So uh, this is Nick, I have a quick question. How are you authenticating to DynamoDB? Is it based off the EC2 role? Currently, yeah. So there's an IAM role assigned to the EC2 instance that I that I have running out there and authenticates it a DynamoDB. Actually, there's some good work that um, Steve S did in the uh, Blob Store S3 provider, where you know I just I just wrote copied his um, configuration struct that basically reads access keys and secret keys from the environment or from kind of the provider chain of AWS. So I'm hoping that once this thing works, I can just use the same um ec2 role-based authentication uh for the dynamo db provider if that makes sense yeah i mean i guess this is i, I know this is a really big topic so i'll just ask the question i know there's no way you know we're not going to answer this simply but you know that's kind of a, a thing right like I, I work a lot in aws right and being being able to make sure that you have the right access you know, you know, using secret keys or, or roles or whichever mechanism, right? There's probably like four or five different ways to do this. You know, being able to make that easy, I think is very, very important. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, Matt, go ahead. I was gonna say there probably is a like longer term conversation about providing um, kind of generic interfaces for connections to the various cloud providers. Right, what be it Azure, DynamoDB, or Azure AWS, GCP, and whomever else. Um, yeah, what I was going to add here uh, was um, there is a couple layers of the conversation there. And as Matt picked up, um, Steve is actually in the process right now of committing. Uh, an S3 a capability provider with integrated support for AWS IAM. Uh, and in that case, it's compatible with the sort of um, one of the two standard Kubernetes ways of uh, doing STS, uh, which is the temporary credentials that um, are granted via kube2im uh, to a uh, something running in a, in a container. And that is uh, something that's being done for one of the Cosmotic Enterprise customers. Uh, and uh, I think, um, yes, there needs to be some broader education on that story there. And we're actually talking now about uh, putting an example into the community that may leverage that or uh, something along those lines. Um, and I think that um, I would love to know Kevin's thoughts uh, maybe around um, a two kind of issues there um, in regards to that on, is there a broader pattern or framework that we put out as a separate capability provider or something or a separate library, Kevin? Um, and um, uh, and what are your other thoughts? And then I'll just dovetail on the second piece, um, uh, Nikki, on retrieving secrets for use. Uh, we are also separately working on a vault uh, type plugin um, uh, for uh, the ecosystem. I don't know that we discussed it internally yet. I, I'm under the impression, though, that we're open sourcing that and putting that in the Awesome Cloud as just another capability provider. You know, we get, I think we've got a deep understanding of the enterprise pain and suffering. 
uh, and all the requirements that come in from all the places. And those are exactly what we're letting uh, people guide us to from a prioritization order. Uh, Kevin, do you want to maybe chime in on that? Yeah, I think I think the the trick is in you know in in maintain <clears throat> sorry in maintaining that separation of responsibilities between what a capability provider is supposed to do versus what an AWS client SDK is supposed to do. So uh, we don't want to be in the business of providing. Um, you know, client SDK abstractions that, uh, across, you know, multiple clouds. Uh, <clears throat> but so, yeah, I guess it's really just a matter of trying to figure out where the abstraction ends and, you know, trying to reuse as much code as possible. Uh, but I mean, for, for Rust anyway, there's a fairly decent AWS client SDK that works pretty well. Um, if you were going to write your capability provider in Go, I think that that one may even be in better shape than the Rust one. So um, it really just depends on which cloud you're trying to interact with. So, so I, I agree with everything you said, Kevin, and I agree it's a fool's errand to try and solve it um, because it's just not going to work. But I, I think what what would be helpful, I mean, for someone like me, right? would be like, here's an established pattern and this established pattern uses this role. And if you do these three, four five things, whatever they are, your provider can now access that role, whether it's through an STS token or inherited, uh, inherit the role from an EC2 instance or whatever, right? But the relationship, yeah. again, I'm speaking mainly on from AWS because that's my familiarity, but I'm guessing this transposes to other clouds too, right? This is how you enable your provider to work on this cloud, right? These are the three or four critical steps. Yeah, I wonder what, um, like you said, you're, you're spot on in that this isn't a problem that, you know, connectivity to these clouds isn't uh, our problem to solve. That That's the, the realm of the client SDKs. But one thing that we might be able to do is extract to this pattern of making something I am compatible into like one of the templates. So right now, you know, when you do wash new provider, I think we prompt you for which kind of provider you want mm -hmm. to see as an example. Uh, one of the things maybe we could look into doing is uh, as an example, um, when you do wash new, we could prompt you for, you know, uh, <clears throat> one of the options might be like an IAM compliant um, provider and it includes, you know, the the boilerplate necessary to get that job done. Right, and 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 the tying them from the provider down to the role, right? Like that to me is a critical step. Then it's then it's up to the person to figure out. Oh well, you know, this example uses this role, so this is how I change it. And you know, I think just drawing out the stepping stones, I think, would be tremendously helpful. And then people can decide if they want to skip a stone or give everything admin access. I mean, you know, whatever they want to do, right? Let them do. But if you just give them those three or four stepping stones and then they should be able to take it from there. Yep, definitely. Well, certainly, um, Nick, in addition to examples, we'll get some documentation out. Um, Steve just got the first pass of that um, that checked in just recently. Matt, I'm uh, glad that you uh, noticed that and we're able to leverage that work already. Um, uh, but we'll make sure that we include documentation and some guidance in wasmcloud.dev as we get it up. And just this morning, in an earlier meeting, we were discussing um, what would the demo look like that we would put together to put into the community. So we had you know, some more enterprise examples of, hey, here's a common deployment scenario, um, uh, for example, how would you integrate with that? And Matt, it sounds like if you've, if you've built a, if you're building another one here, there's multiple examples um, to get that out. Um, uh, Matt, I really appreciate your demo. Uh, are there any other questions across the community for Matt uh, and the DynamoDB stuff that he's working on now? I had one uh, kind of other comment kind of related to Nikki's, um, not related to authentication, so to speak, but testing um, only because it's front of mind, you know, the immediate uh, 
thing that I want to do now that I have kind of a hello world capability provider that interacts with AWS is test it in some way, shape or form. Um, and it's not abundantly clear to me from like a high level approach, how I might want to do that, whether it be, you know, in the case of DynamoDB, you can actually run a local DynamoDB instance. It's like a first party thing provided by AWS, but other cloud services may or may not have um, something that you can run locally. Um, so it's just kind of a thought to throw out there, you know, spaghetti against the wall, how we kind of provide some best practices in terms of testing capability providers that interact with cloud service providers. Uh, maybe, I don't know, Kevin, any thoughts there? <clears throat> yeah, I think there, there's a lot of opportunity for us to smooth out how the, the provider test harness works. And uh, yeah. normally this is where I would just hand it over to Steve and have him comment on the <laughs> provider tests since he, he's the one who wrote it. But um, yeah, I think uh, if there are specific things that, that, you, that you've had trouble with around that, um, we'd definitely like to hear, hear those. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, went about refactoring the way we do uh, provider tests in, in the near future. Because ideally, I want to make sure that, you know, that stuff is as easy as possible to test. Um, so sounds like uh, maybe we can ask Steve to do an update uh, on that next week um, uh, when he's on. Um, I'll note that for next week's meeting. Um, if there are no other questions, I think, uh, Nikki, you had uh, something you wanted to share in today's call. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I can I can go over it really quick. Sure. Uh, all right, so let me kind of sort of lay a little bit of, am I able to share my screen? It looks like it, okay. So let me just kind of sort of lay like a very short context here. Um, this is kind of a reflection of me primarily is like, again, the way I think is I need to see the big pieces. And when I see the big pieces, then I can like, I can then make the connections. But if I don't see the big pieces, I'm just like a child, I'm just lost, right? So, I mean, you know, working with you guys over the last month or two, I kind of lose track of time and you know, I, I hear about these pieces of technologies and then I always ask myself, well, how do they how do they relate? Because until I can draw those relationships, again, I'm lost. So what I did was I talked a little bit about this with Liam and I know I flooded the channel. So I, I, again, I apologize for that. But I put together this short video and it's basically WASM in six minutes. And I won't play it because, you know, I want to respect your time. Uh, but basically this is an intro slide. This is a, you know, what is WASM I talk about? You know, it's a standard for running applications all across the world. I talk about like, well, you know, everything's improved except for application management, which is still kind of a bear. Um, the place that I would like feedback the most is on these two slides. And I'm looking for like technical accuracy. So here I start talking about, you know, obviously the sandbox, it's locked down. You have the notion of a provider, you have the notion of an actor. Uh, if I go a little bit further, the notion of a lattice, the notion of a, a, notion of a contract. Um, I, again, I believe this is, I, I, I'm pretty comfortable in saying it's thematically correct, but I may have gotten a detail wrong that maybe Kevin or Brooks or someone else would pick up that, you know, is completely lost on me, uh, in which case I'm happy to make a correction. And then the next, um, discussion is is this one that I know that I've I showed briefly I'll let me scoot over to that side right so something like this where I start babbling about okay you've got multiple clouds multiple providers this guy initially connected to this guy but this guy had a heart attack so this guy reconnected to this provider over here right so where I would like the most feedback is these two obviously any feedback is good feedback uh, so but I'm looking the, the part that I'm personally most concerned about is make sure this is technically correct. Again, I believe it is. Um, in terms of stylistically, I, I know I purposefully speak very slowly. And there's a reason for that because, you know, I'm trying to, trying to make this as public as I can, including non-native English speakers. So speaking a little bit slower might help a little bit there. Um, 
So anyway, again, any feedback is good feedback. So I can, I'm happy to share this link out. And that's really all I have to say. Any questions or comments? Nikki, I know I looked at an earlier version of it with you, but I um, I haven't looked at this version yet, and I'm excited to see where where it's at and give you some feedback. And um, I think if a couple of people in the community can help contribute to that discussion, we can put this on all the Twitters and tweet it all out and LinkedIn and all the places, and um, you know try to get some views on it. Yeah, and and so what I've done so far is I just put it on YouTube. I didn't. I just told like a handful of people that it was there. I didn't tell a lot of people. I obviously, uh, I'm only now telling this channel. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to, um, I'd like to post on my LinkedIn, but again, you know, any feedback that I have prior to that, um, is good. And, and again, the, the notion here is this is just setting a foundation. This isn't talking about like what we we're just talking about, like, oh, well, how does this interact with AWS and how do I, you know, authenticate to an underlying cloud? It's not at that level. This is at a, these are the high level boxes and these are how they connect. So. All right, that's awesome. Um, any other questions for Nikki? Uh, Nikki, can you put that into uh, Slack uh, just so folks that are following along in general or wherever um, have a chance just to give you and uh, maybe do a call out and uh, just ask for feedback on it. And then um, I think once you're, again, uh, you know, my perspective was I really wanted this in your voice um, because I think the more voices, the more diverse the descriptions, the better um, uh, we can connect with different personas and people with different backgrounds and things like that. So I really think it's important to have um, your voice on there. Uh, I'm excited to see what the reaction is um, to folks that are out, um, out looking at it. Um, so uh, any other uh, demos for today? Does anybody have anything they wanna bring up and discuss? Okay, a couple quick uh, community call outs. Um, I want to do a quick call out to the We Love Tech um, series that Red Badger is hosting. Um, there's still plenty of time to get signed up for that. Uh, and Stuart, you're on the call. Is there anything you want to mention about um, the current plans or how things are going? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, a week today. Um, and um, Taylor and Brooks are talking. We did a bit of a run through with the AV stuff this afternoon, which is much appreciated their time. Um, yeah, it's really, it's, I think it's going to be exciting. We've got um, a talk from Single Store as well as Cosmonic, and I think it's going to be, we're going to look at different ways in which uh, WebAssembly is being used outside of the browser. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, and then um, uh, another, we'll put a link to this in both Slack and we'll tweet this out um, as well, uh, Stuart, um, to try to help uh, get folks registered uh, for that. Uh, and then an additional call out, there's still time to submit for the 2022 KubeCon EU uh, WebAssembly Day. Um, I'll put the link into Slack um, as well, uh, but uh, submissions are open until the 28th. So you still have five days to pull together submission. Anything that is tangently involved in um, cloud native and WebAssembly is welcome um, uh, for the event that we're trying to curate. We have been, I think we were the highest rated uh, focus day last year. We got a 4.5 out of five. We received a gold DNI uh, award and we had around 300 attendees um, at KubeCon um, US uh, counting all of the online. There's a slight change in the attendance um, this year, so I think we'll have an even bigger turnout. This year, if you buy an online ticket for KubeCon, your, it includes full access to all of the day content. So I think uh, we've now opened it up to the you know, 20 to 70,000 registries, uh, uh, registries, depending on um, how uh, quickly we're returning to normal numbers this year. If you want to go and attend on site in Valencia, Spain this May, uh, you still do need um, a ticket for that because there's meals and catering and facilities um, and support. Um, uh, so uh, I still really welcome and encourage anyone, if anyone has questions or would like some assistance or guidance in submitting a talk, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to help um, give you some advice or feedback on a submission and how you can dial it in uh, to get the best look possible. Um, uh, with that, I'd open it up. Any other community call outs or events uh, that people are aware of?
Super. And uh, any other topics that people wanted to chat about today? Now we have some fun demos coming up in the next few weeks with some big performance improvements that we're unlocking and um, uh, and other things. Uh, but if there's no other topics, uh, we can go ahead and call today's meeting. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Actually, next week I will not be here. I'm going to be on vacation next week. Uh, so Brooks, maybe you can be our uh, uh, our benevolent coordinator since you do most of the talking anyway in the meetings. Okay, here we go. Uh, hold on. You check my name really quick in the, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Hold on, hold on. Not that, not that. There we go. There we go. All Perfect. Liam is available for next week. All right. All right. We can, I look forward to seeing how Alt Liam goes. I'm going to try to listen in at least, uh, but I think I'm going to be uh, in an airport or possibly even on a plane um, when, uh, when the meeting happens uh, based on my current schedule. So uh, uh, to be continued uh, next week with Alt Brooks, I mean Alt Liam, uh, uh, until then, I'll stop recording. And as usual, we can hang out and chit chat a bit. Have a great week.